There's so much research out there that points to how people think about these scientific issues, how people make decisions, and how the communication environment is shaped right now. We've looked at why scientific consensus on a broad range of key problems based in science haven't translated into widespread popular support. In many ways, the big opportunity that we've missed, and I think we're now beginning to really grasp the idea that, that science-based science communication is really what we need to effectively establish scientific facts in public discourse. We know the huge impact that values, worldviews, ideology play on how people see these science-based issues. Our communication, perhaps first and foremost, has to address these values. We have to start with listening to people. Recently, we engaged in a dialogue project, bringing some of Australia's leading climate researchers to communities around rural and regional Australia. We wanted these communities to be able to ask questions of Australia's leading climate science community. The next question I'd like to ask is, where is the person? Are we really talking about a shift of or is it just a phase? We also wanted Australia's leading climate researchers to gain access to these communities, to listen to them, to try and understand what shapes their lives. If we listen early in the research process, we can hear what motivates the rest of society, what people value, what people need, what people want. We can feed this upstream into our thinking, shaping the science we do and the ways we communicate it from the earliest moment possible. I mean, I've just, as I said, I've just come out of this orchard from harvesting a week and a Friday week ago. That's the, often the problem that we, yeah. we out here have, trying to digest exactly. who the bloody hell is telling the truth. I'm very concerned how poorly prepared rural Australia is to think about the impacts of both climate change and pick oil. But the thing that may, people will go across deserts for and will uh, strive for and they'll undergo deprivation for is that the promise that the future will be better. And that's what we have to focus on. We have to, we have to say to people, the future can be better. The process of listening can allow communicators to grasp and contextualise people's opinions in order to gain a deeper understanding of their core intentions and motivations. We can have preconceived notions in what people may or may not think or where where their confusions or where their main stressors might be. So listening to them is, again, I think a key part. Purposes, but it's based on solid science and there's been no evidence of that. But I thought this particular format worked very well for enabling people to be put in a space that's what I would call from, if you like, a sort of pedagogical point of view, a safe space for people to be able to say, well, I'm not really sure about this, please tell me X. And I saw lots of participants doing that. Incorporating listening into how we communicate has the potential to counteract the cold image that some people in the community have of science currently. But it was particularly valuable in terms of gaining real insights into the, the variability of responses and attitudes and the deeply held passions and that it's not going to work just saying, well, here's the evidence, now believe it. What we need are people who are emotional about it and who are passionate about it uh, because a love of environment and what's happening to our world is caught, not taught. The aim of the project was absolutely correct in the sense of being an effective, potentially effective way of doing this and there should have been hundreds of these and if that was the case, then I think we might have actually seen serious learning occurring right across the Australian community about these issues, on the scientific side as much as on the community side. Through this project, we've learned that listening doesn't give communicators an insight into everything. Research shows the influence of values and ideologies, for example, is often subconscious. But given the socio-political nature of many of these issues, we're perpetuating past mistakes if we don't take into account how values, ideology and preconceived beliefs influence current debates. It's truly important to build a community of practice that is, is as much informed by the social science of science communication um, as possible. And, and, and 
and inform not just in as I said in, in terms of the principles of how do we as individuals make decisions how do how does a message become more persuasive but also at, at a social and a political level what do we know about how how debates are are are, uh, are being led in, 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 in political environments and in, in polarized political environments listening can be used in order to then tailor and target responses and communications to distinct audiences. I, I think we're, we're, we're so afraid that tailoring to particular audiences is, is just us buying into this new Orwellian reality of where media are, but that's what we've always been doing. This is not about spinning science in one direction or the other. This says, I know what the science is, I know what the scientific findings are. So which part of those scientific findings are relevant to different groups of the audience. The immediate challenge is how we develop an integrated and applied approach to science communication. There's no doubt that we need stronger li linkages between science communication researchers, science communication practitioners, and scientists doing the work at the coal face. I guess our objective is best practice science communication, but the challenge is how we actually get there. We can do a lot of different things to listen. We can treat the questions at the end of a public talk as a chance to really try and understand what people are thinking about, what do people care about. We can run dialogue events where we actually invite people in to say what their position is and how your, your research might affect them. You can use social media. You can pay attention to Twitter or Facebook or blogs or the comment threads on blogs as a valuable place where you can learn more about the rest of the world. The liberal democratic societies need to um, create professionals and create processes for communication um, that assure that that tremendous asset we have, our knowledge, isn't wasted. And we need to reconceptualize how we've been communicating and start creating purposeful communication that starts with the science and ends with the best practice in terms of social and communication sciences. What we're trying to argue is that science done without listening to the rest of the world is not science that's effective at all.